So I was asked about the Moon and Venus, and I decided to make a little video about the Moon and Venus. Moon, Venus, starvation, as we call. Now what's interesting is that, um, you know, if you studied Vedic astrology back in like 2008 or 2009 or 2010 or 2011 or even 2012, you pretty much could find like no mention of this Avashta term or anything with this regard to this in the Vedic astrology. And it's really not mentioned that much in like the Brihat Parashara. It's just like kind of a really, really quick thing. It's just like, okay, um, a planet in an enemy's sun will be starved. A planet, you know, as, you know, with the sun will be agitated. And when we're talking about Avashtas, there's different kinds. There's the Baladi Avashtas, which are based on the planet being in certain degrees of a sign. And then there's like the Shayanadi Avashtas and the Deep Tadi Avashtas. And the Lajitadi Avashtas are something that like weren't really talked about that much in the Vedic astrology world until um, one of my main teachers, Ernst Wilhelm, he's like the one who really like decoded this and sort of figured it out. Um, now everybody's using these techniques, even if they don't really like him as a teacher, I've noticed. Um, and that's cool. That's fine. Um, because it works. It just works so well. It's just a great technique. So every astrologer should incorporate this in their tool belt if they're a Vedic astrologer. Um, so, but first, like, just to introduce the Avashtas, and I'll try to make a separate video on introducing them more thoroughly, but basically, every planet has friends and enemies. Um, energies that just go f for, uh, smoothly with it, and energies that don't go so smoothly with it. And it's really an interesting thing because in Western astrology, there isn't any of this like structured system of what any time a planet's in any sign, whether it's doing really good or bad, they just have the exaltation and the debilitation, but they don't really have anything for the in-between states of a planet. It's like an extreme of great or bad or somewhere no one knows what's going on if it's in the middle. For example, like... Uh, Venus in the sign of Cancer, they'd be like, yeah, that's great for Venus. It's in a benefic sign. It's watery. It's gentle. The moon, it's feminine energy. It'll work well. So in Vedic astrology, that's like not true. Venus in the sign of Cancer is one of the worst places for it to be. I'm sorry if you have that or anything, but um, there's things you can do to work on it, and you need to pay attention to this video, basically. So when Venus is in, Venus's enemies are the sun and the moon, um, because Venus is about getting fulfillment in life and harmony and making decisions that help not just you but the other person help both of you get like a win-win sort of situation that leads you to a better just like more diplomatic more balanced more e a place of equanimity a place of harmony more fulfilling place so when the moon is with venus or directly opposite and aspecting it strongly, or even if it's giving a lesser aspect like a square, um, use the actual aspect points and the virupas if you know how to do that. But if not, you'll know that just the opposition or the conjunction of moon with Venus, or when Venus is in the sign of the moon, Cancer, these are times when the moon is starving Venus. So Venus doesn't feel... Venus feels starved by the moon. She feels like she can't fulfill, she can't reach this point of that it, she needs to reach. And so, why would that be? But when you really think about it, it does make sense. Um, moon is like our imagination and our creativity. Um, it's like, on a deeper level, it's like our ego mind and what we're comfortable with. And it represents our attachments, like kind of how the moon sign Cancer's got that claw, it just like clings on to things, and the clinging quality of the moon and is very strong. Um, and that kind of gets in the way of relationships, doesn't it? When you cling to things, when you're like, you know, this person, this one night was this way to me, and she's always got to be that way for the rest of my life, you know what I mean? Or you'll, even if you do... Um, meet the love of your life or something like this and you're with her you when the moon is strongly starving Venus you'll want to this love to just keep growing and growing every day more and more sometimes but 
what I'm getting at is kind of like unrealistic at times. Like the moon is like this planet that's in more of the feeling world, the imagination, the fantasy world at times. And so like one can kind of, one can indulge in fantasies on one hand. And that gets in the way of being realistic and finding a realistic partner, which Venus wants you to do. <clears throat> a good Venus doesn't make one want to run around and be promiscuous, let's say. Um, so a good Venus is, is like one that, you know, how Venus rules the Navamsha chart, the ninth chart, the chart of marriage. So Venus is about marriage and about getting you like to with a person who's really f gonna fulfill you for your life you know and so the moon is just like changing so fast all the time it's like not steady enough for that devotion that Venus needs that's another way you can look at it so another way you can look at it too there's so many ways you can see this <clears throat> when moon is aspecting Venus one can become kind of codependent in relationships where they kind of you know, they just, the ego mind latches onto this person. And so then they need that person in like every part of their life. You know what I mean? And when they're not with them at any point, they can't be happy or can't function. And that's not really, again, that's not unhealthy. And that's bordering on like um, unrealism and delusion. Um, so a lot of people might think that like moon Venus conjunction, moon Venus opposition is like a placement for divine love. And while that can be the case, it's, it can actually get in the way of that just more likely and it can actually get in the way of relationships as well um, so it's a very interesting thing um, when when you get like a uh, Tom Cruise is one example of this of moon Venus being starred and you know he's like oh, I'm all about this one partner and then I'm all about that partner in a few years and then yada 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 you know um, but we see this a lot, and so the way you want to approach this is you want to like learn more about rational, like not rational. You want to learn about like how really healthy relationships work, and how healthy people work. And you want to, you probably need to like actually learn about relationships if you have this placement because there's probably a lot of this like um, mental or emotional like attachment to certain ideas or sentiments about how love and how relationships should be. They might be right, they just, but they might not be. And um, so it's really just a good idea to get like a second opinion, to go see a counselor, go see an astrologer when you have this placement about relationships, because they can really help you put things in perspective if they know these avashtas. Um, and you need to like, yeah, learn to have not so much codependence, but some healthy like autonomy in your relationships. If you have this placement, you have to make sure that you, you are kind of watching it as you go into the relationship and don't become just so immersed in that person or something that you lose sight of your life and you stop taking care of your life. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, the moon is a really interesting thing because it has no enemies actually. So the moon will like latch to whatever it can. But Venus has the enemy of the moon and sun. And with the sun, it's it's actually more like they're too rigid and too fixed a lot of the times um, and to want to have a partner and they'll sacrifice partners in favor of their ambition and their destiny and the sun stuff you know and but with the moon it's the opposite where they might meet a lot of people but they can't seem to stay with someone or they can't you know the moon's just changing so fast all the time that it interferes with Venus who has more of a, like she'll change, but she's also got a devotion quality or a fixed quality where she'll stick with one thing for a long time. <clears throat> yeah, so that's pretty much everything I had to say about the moon. Um, if you want me to cover any other avastas, let me know, and I will do so. Um, unless I feel like there's someone else who's covered it really well, I'll just direct you to that. Um, but I know someone asked me about Mars and Mercury. I'll do a video on that. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of want to talk a little bit more about some of these avashtas. Um, avashta means like a state and a condition. And so these are all the lajitadi avashtas. And these are the ones that are not as well known until last recent years. Like, what does it mean that Venus is starved, you know? But then most texts had the deep tadi avashtas, which were always in, you know, kind of always included in books. And those are more what 
what we would have all been familiar with um, and what we all were familiar with up until, you know, recent last decade or so. Um, deep toddy avashtas will work better for like judging the overall strength or condition of a planet to do things. But these laji toddy avashtas deal with more of like our subjective states and how we feel. So um, there could be other placements, other yogas, all these other things that get you into relationships. But when you have this moon Venus, you'll still not feel as fulfilled as the other relationships because Venus is that sense of fulfillment and contentment. So it's really interesting. Um, okay, thanks you guys.